Straight up Tennessee family, what's good today on this Wednesday, man? Happy hump day, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Straight Up Tennessee today, man, and we are diving in, bro. Listen, Tennessee had a big basketball game there on Monday, handled business. I, I am, this team, y'all, this basketball team has potential. You know, I think last year at the same time, we were saying this basketball team had potential. But I think now when you look at the pieces added and the scoring, the scoring efficiency is the thing that we're talking about now with this year's team. It is definitely a completely, and I mean completely different roster when you talk about how they can score and win. Um, you look at a couple of the guys on the team, and we'll talk about it a little bit today as the top of this show. But, man, it's still Missouri week. Big week, y'all. This is still a big week. We talked about it on the Monday show, man, about who is Missouri. But, you know, we're going to talk more about some key matchups, I think, in this game today. We're going to hit pump the gas or hit the brakes as well. But there are some key matchups when you look at this football game. And we're going to talk about it a little bit today on the midweek chat. Y'all know what to do, man. Let's run it up right now. It's the top of the show. It's straight up Tennessee, baby. Welcome to the midweek chat. What's good, everybody? Welcome to Straight Up Tennessee today on a Wednesday, man. Y'all know what I said earlier. It's the top of the show, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell notification right now, man, so you guys never miss an episode. I'm telling you, it is the easiest way for you to know when the boy is going to be on here. You hear me? Like, when you, when you, when you, when you hit the bell notification... It's going to alert you every single time a premiere opens, uh, every single time a video goes live. When we go live on Sundays and Mondays right now, it's going to alert you. So make sure that you do that. Um, if you're listening right now on Apple and Spotify, man, we love y'all over there, man. But those two platforms have really been good to us and, and to this show. And so I appreciate it, man. Continue to rate it five stars and continue to let people know why they need to be rocking uh, with Straight Up Tennessee, man. So. It's Wednesday, guys. We made it. it. It's kind of felt like a drag of a week a little, right? I think Monday and Tuesday, I was kind of just like, oh, my goodness. Come on, Wednesday. Because when we get to Wednesday, it just feels like the week zooms by. And that's what we need. Because that means that we're only three days away from another big game in Como against the Missouri Tigers. This, this game, guys, is... um. I said it on Monday, but it's the biggest game of the year, I think, as far as <clears throat> as far as what both teams have been through so far and as far as what can make this season over the top, overachieving again for this Tennessee team. This is the difference to me in a 10-win season or an 8-win season, in my opinion. You lose to Missouri. You're definitely not going to win 10 games. You might get nine there. Really? You might only get eight, in all honesty, because you lose to Missouri, and then you turn around and you lose to the number one team, who should be the number one team um, in the country, in the Georgia Bulldogs. I don't know. This is the game, I think, that tells us exactly where we're going to land here when we get to game 12 against Vanderbilt uh, on senior day. You know, beat Missouri, guys. You get to nine. Y'all, you get to eight. Bro, beat Georgia? Wow. Wow. You get to nine, and then you know you're going to beat Vanderbilt. At least you, you, you're just proven that over the years they can't beat you anywhere. <sighs> this is the game that's going to decide if we're going to be a, a, an eight-win team to me 
or 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 potentially a 10 win team. I think nine is still obviously great. And then you can go win that bowl game and win 10 on the year. But this game is massive. We're going to come back to this game in just a minute. We'll talk about some key mass matchups, uh, pump the gas or hit the brakes. We'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the submissions that we got on that. But uh, let's talk about this basketball team a little bit, guys. Tennessee wins on Monday against Tennessee Tech, 80 to 42. Dalton Connect and Jordan Ganey are the pair that we didn't know we needed. Let me explain what I mean by that. Sorry, I just took a drink of water. The boy's throat just dry. You know what I'm saying? You get on here and talk, it starts getting dry. But um, Dalton Connect is a pure scorer. But not only has he become this pure scorer and this kind of go-to guy, I think, for Tennessee early in the year, he's also playing at a high level on the defensive end. You're starting to see his hands get into a lot of different things. Uh, the way he's forcing bad shots. You know, he's 6'6". He's long. He's, he's, he's not like just this lanky guy. He's long, though, and, and strong, man. And he's forcing the people he guards to make a decision. One, are you going to try to get to the cup? Because if so, I've got Jonas Adu there. Or are you going to try to make a jump shot where I can go and block that because of my length? He really is kind of a matchup nightmare, and I'm interested to see when we get in the league play against the SEC, how does he do against the length of uh, Arkansas, the length of Alabama, Texas A&M? Like, what does he look like when we get into league play? Because right now he seems a lot like he just seems unstoppable. Jordan Ganey, man, I, I thought coming in that he was just a shooter. He's so smooth, man. He is so smooth. His game is so smooth. The way he attacks the, ba the basketball, the way he attacks the defender when he has the ball in his hand, he has zero fear. And he has enough touch to take steps back if he has to pull back and knock down a jumper, a three-pointer, whatever it is, Ganey can make it happen. They lead the game last night. Dalton had seven – uh, sorry, on Monday night, he had 17. Dalton did, and Ganey had 14. Um, Josiah James was right behind him with 12. So you you got to like it. You know, it was really awesome to see Zakai Ziegler get back on the floor. I think he only played 12 minutes, which we know down the stretch, that's just not going to be the case, right? I, I, I'm in a text group with a lot of friends back home in Knoxville. Shout out to the Vols. <laughs> text group uh and, and we talk a lot during a lot of games we've had basketball football baseball we talk during the whole games a lot of the guys got an opportunity to go to that game on monday and uh <clears throat> it got kind of brought up and they're just talking about man dk don't connect man dk is a baller man this and that and everybody's just getting really excited and then i asked the question i was just like man i i wonder what happens right like how does this rotation figure itself out you, you, you guys know, like, basketball is, is nice to have 10 guys that can really play, but you don't want to continuously sub that deep into your bench when you start to get into closer competition games. If you can and you feel really comfortable about it, cool. And I think we can, but I'm just not sure that that's going to be the case all year. I mean, guys, we're playing 12 guys like it's nothing right now. And I'm very interested to see how this rotation fills itself out. I think to me, that is the biggest kind of question mark with this team so far is how in the world do. How do I say this? How in the world does Tennessee figure out and Rick Barnes really like how does he figure out? what lineups work best with what, and when to use them. I think that is going to be the, de like the, the thing that pushes this team to the next level, in my opinion. I, I feel like if they can figure this out early, if they can figure this out and, 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 and start to shape this out, I mean, y'all, we got Wisconsin up in Wisconsin next weekend. This is a, a massive game. And so you got to start thinking that way, like what happens and how – does this rotation kind of shrink itself or you just have the right five, right seven, eight out there um, and ready to play at any time? But, you know, Zakai Ziegler is going to play. Uh, Santiago Vescovi is going to play. Josiah James is going to play. And so all of this is it, just it's question marks for me. Very, very, very question marks. 
Big question marks to me. And I think if, if there was any flaw about this team so far, which there's not many, there's really not a lot that this team is doing bad. There's not a lot of things this team is, is doing poorly. But if I had to be nitpicky, it's the, it's the post presence right now. You know, Jonas Adu still hasn't really kind of developed into this dog in the post. And I don't think he will. I don't think that's his game. You know, you see him hit a couple of pull-up jumpers on Monday night. And you see him hit a three at Michigan State. You know, he's more of a five-out type center who can get big blocks and can rebound well. I mean, Jonas Adu probably had. I know he had more than 10 rebounds on Monday. I don't have the stats pulled up right now, or I would tell you for sure. Um, I'm, I'm looking them up as I kind of talk about this right now, but uh, Jonas Adu just, I don't think that he's the dog. Now, Tobe Awaka is a dog, but he's 6'8". And when you start playing against some of these seven-footers in league play, it's going to be a little different. And I said that we play Wisconsin next week. Guys, we play Wisconsin this week. We play Wisconsin Friday night in Wisconsin, bro. Massive game. That's a 8 p 9 p.m. tip up there. 8 p.m. local time uh, from where I'm at in Central Time. Um, Wow. That's going to be a banger. Anyways, kind of going back to this, to this, to the Tennessee Tech game, just so so everybody can understand what I'm talking about. Jonas Adu, he had eight boards. I mean, it seemed like he had way more. He led the team in rebounds, and right behind him was Josiah James. We had 42 total rebounds, which is fantastic. So, you know, again, you got to look at the team. And Tobe Awaka is a is a dog, but he's six eight, and you got to figure out with him how can he dominate. How can he assert himself, kind of? And as he asserts himself, what are the specific things and how can he score the basketball? I think that's the weakest link right now on our team. We got size, but as far as post presence in the scoring side of things, that might be the weakest link right now. Will it develop or is it an issue at all? Maybe it's just from the body of work we've seen so far. I'm not sure, but like I said, if I had to be nitpicky, that is what I'm going to nitpick right now with this basketball team. But they travel up to Wisconsin uh, to play the Badgers this Friday at, at 9 p.m. Eastern, man. That's going to be a banger. That, that's a massive game. And then they turn around on Monday and, and get Walford, and then they get off for an entire week and play Syracuse in the Maui Invitational. So, wow, man. This team is special, and I'm excited to see how they continue to progress and develop as the year goes on. But. Uh, let's talk, man. Let's let's talk about the matchups, bro, for this Missouri and Tennessee game. Um, <sighs> guys, I, I say this. I've been saying this all week. This game is massive, man. <laughs> and you just want to win this one, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want this one bad. Not because Tennessee has lost to Missouri, because we haven't. Josh Heupel's known to hang 60 on these guys. But this team is different from Missouri this year. Cody Schrader's leading the league in rushing. Luther Burden almost has 1,000 yards receiving. Brady Cook's playing probably the best football of his career so far as a junior there. And then you get a great receiver in Theo Wees, the defense. You know, Chris Abrams drain, great corner. Tyrone Hopper, great linebacker. They got some guys up front that can make some noise. It's a big game. And the first key matchup to me is going to be the Missouri wide receivers and the Tennessee defensive backs. This is um, this is massive, fam. Like the, the fact that you've got two guys on Missouri's roster who very well can get to the league and will be in the league. And you've got guys in the defensive back room who are still learning, you know, I think this is an opportunity for us to find out how good are our defensive backs. You know, I, I, I don't want to look back on the game Saturday and say, man, they lost us the game. But I think that will be the telltale of the game is the receivers of Missouri versus the defensive backs of Tennessee. But we all know how defensive backs get better or, or not even get better. We know how defensive backs make an impact in the game. And that's if we're getting pressure. 
And so that second matchup to me is the defensive line versus the offensive line. Missouri's offensive line obviously has been doing something right for Cody Schrader to have almost 1,000 yards on the year. Can we force Brady Cook and Schrader? Can we force Schrader to be shut down? Can we put the Ray Davis treatment on him without allowing big numbers from the quarterback? You know, we did well against Kentucky. We stopped Ray Davis. Game plan executed. But Devin Leary threw for 372 yards. Like, that that's not okay. And you can't let Brady Cook throw for 372 yards because half of those are probably chunk plays. They're not going to take – you know, the five and 10 yard hitches and slants like Kentucky took all night. Like they taking shots. That's massive to me, bro, because I feel like if Tennessee's defensive line in the interior, specifically Elijah Simmons, o Elijah Simmons, Omar Norman, Lott, Eason, Garland, these guys, they, they, they got to get to, they got to blow up the interior that will allow the outside guys in Tyler Barron, James Pierce, Joseph, Roman Harrison. It's going to allow those guys to get to have time to get to cook, contain him. He can run, man. He had 106 on us last year. He he can't have that this year. He can't have that. You shut down Schrader, Cook's just as involved in the run game. We got to stop him. And so you, there's a lot of things like that, man, that are just like, bro, how? How are we going to do this? And I'm just telling you, I feel like Tim Banks is going to have to coach uh, and, and have a game plan of his life to, to, to come out of this one with a win. I don't think it's even as big. Uh, I don't think that, like, even the Georgia scheme, like, we know what Georgia's going to do. And they got weapons, but, man, Missouri's weapons just seem a little bit more lethal to me. You know, Georgia, Lad McConkey, Kendall Milton, you know, Carson Beck, new quarterback for them. He's been playing well. Uh, Rosemary Jack Saint, you know, the, you, you know, the guys that Georgia has and you know what they're going to bring. You know, they got the transfer from Missouri, Missouri and Dominic Lovett. But I just feel like Missouri's skill players are what makes this team so scary. The defensive backs have it out for them and we got to be able to to lock Luther Burden down. And I, let me hesitate. Let me say let me rewind. We're not going to be able to lock him down. I'm going to say that right now. He going to get his. But how much of his will he get? That is the thing that we have to make sure that we stop. Luther Burton is going to get his. But how much of his can we allow him not to get? That's what we have to do. Theo Weiss, we gotta, uh, he going to get his. But we got to make sure that he don't get all of what he wants. Cody Schrader, the same thing. And Brady Cook, that's the X factor to me for Missouri is the quarterback. Uh, the last key matchup for me is Joe Milton versus Missouri, period. Missouri's known to send blitzes. Missouri's known to disguise coverages. Missouri's known to, to delay a, a linebacker blitz. How does Joe Milton handle the scheme of Missouri that they're going to give him? They're going to try to confuse him, y'all. They're going to try to confuse him all night long. How does Joe Milton handle the pressure the disguise, and the scheme of the Missouri defense. Joe Milton has been stacking games right now, y'all. He has been playing fantastic. I don't think that Joe has to go out and have his best game Saturday. Hear me, hear me, listen to me. When I say his best game, like Joe has to go out and have his best game against Georgia. You following me? Like, if we're going to beat Georgia, Joe Milton's going to go and have a Hendon Hooker Alabama performance. Like, it's going to be one of those. To beat Missouri, I think you got to play as good as you did in the first half against Alabama and as great as you did against Kentucky. I think you have to play like that. I think you got to see a little bit more stretching the field in the past game from Joe. Um, I'd like to see more of the slants that Squirrel had. Dante, I, I'd like to see more. And I've said this all week, and I'm going to keep saying it. Dante Thornton gets his first touchdown as a Vol Saturday. Mark my words. I'm telling you. They've been priming him. They've been getting him in position. They've switched him to the outside to where he's on the field more. He's making plays. Can Tennessee find a way to get that kid in the end zone? I think we will on Saturday. How does Joe affect the run game Saturday? 
Again, this is Joe Milton versus the Missouri defense. I didn't say just in the past game. What can Joe do in the run game to force Missouri to not just respect what he can do on the ground, but truly, truly understand that Joe might not beat you, and he's not going to beat you on the ground, but he sure can hurt you on the ground with how many five and tens and fifteens that he can go and get whenever he wants. Can he do that Saturday? And if he does, how much does that open up the run game and the pass game? Because if you got to respect Joe Milton, you definitely got to respect Jalen Wright. You definitely got to respect Dylan Sampson. You definitely got to respect Jabari Small, who I appreciate Coach Heupel for holding out him and Omari Thomas and another guy and a couple of other guys last week saying, go get healthy so that we can go. We need you these next two massively. Forget this game. Like, we winning. We beating UConn. But we need you next week and the week after. And so, Joe Milton is the big, big circle for Tennessee. How does he handle the Missouri pressure and disguise and all of the schemes and different things they're going to throw at him because they're going to challenge his thinking. But how do how does he <clears throat> respond? It's time for one of my favorite things that we do here on the show, man. That is pump the gas or hit the brakes. One of the first uh, one one of the first things right here is, uh, and I don't have the questions popping up on screen for YouTube, but I'm gonna just read them here for you. So uh, we're gonna pump the gas or hit the brakes. Dante Thornton gets his first touchdown as of all. I'm pumping the gas. Dante is getting his first tutty. I'm telling y'all, I really believe this is the game for him. Like it's set up for Dante to have not just a great game, but a really, really dynamic performance. He's been priming. They've been throwing him little routes. It's time to cut him off and let him cut the uh, let him take the top off the defense. I think Dante gets his first touchdown. Um, pump the gas or hit the brakes. Cody Schrader rushes for a hundred or more yards against Tennessee. You know what? I'm gonna pump the gas. I think Schrader gets a hundred. But I think it's kind of like the Alabama 100. I think he's going to have to have 25 touches to get it. You know what I mean? If, if I'm touching the ball 25 times, I think I'm going to go get 100. And I think if if you're Tennessee and he touches the ball 25 times and gets over 100, and, and I'm not talking like 190-something. I'm talking about he just gets over 100 yards. I think you got to be okay with that if you're Tennessee with 25 touches. You, you know what I mean? Um, so – I will pump the gas that Cody Schrader gets over 100 yards. Uh, pump the gas or hit the brakes. Joe Milton scores the first touchdown for Tennessee on Saturday. Um, man, this question has been this one has been in here a couple of times. I'm gonna hit the brakes, and I'm gonna hit the brakes only because I think it's going to be. Uh, a running back. I just think they've, they've been so dynamic, man. Jalen Wright just can b- break off for 50, 60, 70, 80 yards at any time, and he's been doing it consistently the last two games. Kentucky broke one. Last week, UConn broke one. He could do it again, and I think he will, or somebody will get that first tutty. So I'm going to hit the brakes that Joe Milton scores a first touchdown. Now, prove me wrong, Joe Milley. Go do your thing, and I'm going to be hyped regardless of who scores it. But I'm going to hit the brakes on that one this week. Lastly, pump the gas or hit the brakes. Tennessee covers and wins by a touchdown. Ooh. Hmm. Ooh. <sighs> Y'all know what my score was. It was 45-41, Tennessee. Mm. A touchdown is hard for me right now, bro. A touchdown is hard for me to say right now. Um, can I answer that one on Friday? This is the this is my show. Like I can, I can, I feel like I can do what I want to do, right? Let me answer that one on Friday. I'm gonna answer that pump. I'm gonna save that pump the gas or hit the brakes for Friday's show. Tennessee covers. And wins by a touchdown. That was the that was the that was the statement. I'm gonna hold on to that one. 
right now on a Wednesday, I <laughs> I don't want to say anything, bro. I, I just I don't I don't want to say anything. I'm gonna hold up. Respect that for me, please, everybody, please. Don't clown me on YouTube. I don't want to see no comments about all oh, rug. You gotta. I'm gonna answer it on Friday. What do y'all think? Y'all comment like right now. Like, does Tennessee cover and win by a touchdown Saturday? That's that's tough for me to say, man. I I can't. I can't. I just right now I can't answer it. I'm not gonna say that it can't happen, but I can't answer it. That is my. Um, <laughs> that's my contribution, I guess I could say. Um, Y'all, it's been the midweek chat, y'all. I'm, I'm so excited for this one. I'm excited to see Tennessee basketball on Friday night. I'm excited to wake up and watch SEC Nation and then get to it with Tennessee bas- or Tennessee football at 2.30, 3.30 uh, Central, or 3.30 Eastern, but 2.30 local time where I'm at and where the game is being played. So I'm very excited about this one, y'all, man. Y'all know, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification right now so you never miss an episode. Join the channel, man, 99 cents a month. It, you won't even know. It's coming out of your account. Stop buying a McDouble and buy some straight up Tennessee. You hear me? Uh, Apple and Spotify, we love y'all. We appreciate it. Uh, We'll be back Friday, man, for the One More Day episode. It's been your boy Ruck in the building. And y'all already know what it is, man. It's straight up Tennessee, baby. We'll see y'all back for the One More Day.